Hello, mesdames et messieurs. Welcome to episode 14 of my Lightroom Photoshop and Photography Tips. My name is Serge Romani. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. And in last week's episode, I showed you my workflow working with Lightroom 4. This was the before photo and this was the end result. This week, we're going to do something similar, except we're going to go for a selective black and white. What is that? Basically, we're going to take this photo, turn it into a black and white, except a few colors like the reds, as you can see here. And we do this only in Lightroom and actually we'll show you two ways to do this. So let's get started and let me show you how we can do this in Lightroom. All right, mesdames et messieurs, so let's try to do a little artistic touch with a, a pretty re regular shot. So we're going to do some selective black and white and I will show you two techniques to do it. First, let's do some basic retouching with this. First thing that I always do is that I open up the shadows and I bring on the highlights. This compresses all the, the, the values in the photo, meaning that anything which is too bright is a bit less bright, anything that was too dark is a bit opened. Next thing I do is I take care of the sky because the sky is a bit too bright for me. So I'm gonna take a gradual filter. I'm gonna put it over the sky. This you know if you follow my tutorials and I'm gonna make this a bit darker. Okay, the whole idea is just to get some more details in the sky. Okay, once I've done that, I know I'm gonna go for black and white and black and white is good when it's more dense, when it's more dark, so I'm gonna bring down the overall exposure a little bit something like that next i'm going to um, do my whites and blacks so for this i hold down the option key and i go right until i see some dots when i see some dots i know i have reached 100 percent white points at this point and because it's you and because it's now i'm gonna back it off a little bit i don't want to go the whole way because i want this photo to be dense Remember, we are going for some artistic flavor tonight. So that's my white points. My black points, I'm going to press the option key and go left. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So now we've got something which is a bit more balanced. Um, let's tackle uh, selective black and white. What is selective black and white? Well, the whole idea is that we have a whole photo which is black and white except some elements. So two ways to do this. Way, let's say the easy way number one. You go down to your U saturation and luminance. And for example, on this photo, I'm going to leave the red saturation at normal, but I'm going to bring down the orange, the yellow, the green, the aqua, uh, the blue, the purple, and the magenta. I'm going to bring everything down to minus 100 except the red. So anything which is red in a photo, like many of the boats, a bit of the flags here and this little, uh, you know, this gentleman and this little bag here are coming out a little bit of the rooftop, but that's a fast way to do this. Now, let's say you wanted to get rid, you only wanted the boat to be red and you don't want this to be red. You don't want this to be red. You don't want this to be red. So once you've done that, you can just take a brush, go into saturation, saturation and um, put your saturation at minus 100 and just brush out anything that you don't want to be red and there you have it you have a complete uh, you know selective color only the reds are visible and only the reds in the boats are visible anything else was taken out okay so that's one way of doing it I'll show you another way of doing it so i'm going to go back in my um in my history panel here until we've come down to uh, here, black clipping. So we're back in color. The other way to do it is this way. Um, you take a brush. So here we are in the brush. You go for saturation minus 100. Make the brush big. Make sure auto mask is off. Make sure feather is 100%. Flow is 100%. Density is 100%. And you just brush away all the colors because your brush is 100% saturation. So we take out all the colors in the photo. Now, once we've done that, okay, we can just um, make this brush a new raised brush by clicking here, okay? And by default, auto mask is on, which could be an idea. So now I'm just gonna paint away basically 
uh, I'm going to erase what I painted. Now, I'm not only bringing back the reds on this technique, but I'm also bringing back you know, anything which is a bit orange in the boat, which could be an idea or could not. You know, it depends on what you want. Then you can just press the space bar and zoom in you know, and make this even more precise. Um, okay, make this even more precise. So you could take auto mask off because auto mask is, uh, is good when you are on the border of things, but not when you do like inside of things. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to back on um, the brush A, which was my original brush, and uh, make it smaller. And I'm just going to take this black, uh, this, uh, this density. So I'm back on taking out colors. Okay, so you have a kind of a different result, but it can be neat too, you know. And this way, we only have what's in the boat that is red. That's another way of doing it. So I'm going to keep on working on this photo from that point on. Okay, so that was two ways to do selective color. Now, um, actually not. You know what? I prefer the other way because I don't like the orange in the boat. So I prefer the other way around. So let's go back to black clipping. And uh, let's just do this technique again. Bring all the, sat anything, uh, all the saturation down except the reds. You know, I, th I thought the, the result was a bit nicer. I just wanted to show you both of the techniques. Sometimes it depends on the on the photo. Sometimes the other technique works better. You really have to try both. Okay. I mean, I know it's a bit old fashioned to do this selective black and white. You know, that's what I hear all the time. So now I have a brush at minus one hundred saturation. I'm just taking out everything. I just want the boat to be red and anything else not to be red. Okay. So I know it's a bit old fashioned, but people love it. People still love it. I know it's crazy, but people still love it. Okay, so let's continue. Now we've got a black and white photo with some red elements, but it, the photo needs some more drama. It lacks of contrast. There's nothing happening in the sky. The lines are not straight. Boy, do we have some work ahead of us. So let's go into lens correction. You know, we do the profile to um, get anything uh, we can do automatically corrected. Then we go straight into manual. And I'm just going to, I think my rotation of my photo is not quite good. I'm going to try to rotate the photo until I've got my buildings here and here a bit more straight. I cannot stand when buildings are not straight. I know it's crazy. I probably need to go see a psychiatrist for this, but I just cannot stand when buildings are not straight. That's just how I'm built. Okay, now I just did a rotation and buildings are straight, which is good. So now we still need a lot more drama and the way to bring drama first is to boost the contrast a bit more. And I think I'm even gonna make the exposure even a bit darker. Yeah, make it more dense. And now I'm gonna take a brush, a white brush. So let's go for exposure. And I'm gonna do my usual cheating with dodge and burn to add some drama in the photo. So I'm gonna add some exposure here uh, makes, uh, you know, just like a flow. My flow is at 74, it should be at 100. Yeah, I just wanna see if there was some kind of light here. Maybe a bit of light here on the boat. So I'm just, make sure you click new to make a new brush every time you do this dodge and burn thing. It's important because this way, you see, I can just correct the brush I did here. So I click on new. You need a pretty fast machine because when you start doing a lot of brush, can, things can get a bit slow. Let's see if I can make this white here a little bit more in the middle. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, and new. Now I'm gonna take care of the sky. I'm gonna make little lines in the sky to, uh, to get uh, some more drama in the sky. So at first it's gonna be too much, too much visible that I did some drama in the sky. So it's too much visible. And I'm gonna bring this down to 0.05. And it's just gonna make something, you see 0 0.05, you can hardly see it, but check it out. Before the brush, in the sky, after the brush in the sky. Very subtle, actually too subtle here. Let's go for, oh, 0 0.24, oh, 0 0.24 works. It's a, mm, no, it's a bit too strong. 0 0.14, 0 0.14 is, the, that's what we wanted. Perfecto. Okay, now, uh, let me see if I can, uh, I still need, I think my blacks, you see my blacks are too bright. I think I'm gonna bring down my blacks. I want to see when you do black and white, you should have some elements which are true black and some elements which are true white. 
I think it's, it's important. Um, okay, maybe add some more uh, brush here. I'm gonna back on the brush, see if I can do something more in the sky here. I can get the flow to be, and the density to be a bit lower, and see if I can add some a bit white, a bit more white here in the sky. Uh, by bringing up the exposure on that brush. Yeah, kind of worked out. Just makes the sky more dramatic. Uh, let's see if we can maybe boost clarity. Clarity could be interesting on black and white. Yeah, that works kind of good. Okay, and uh, I want to recrop. I want to crop this photo. So one thing that I have, that you can do on on black and white, which can work sometimes, is to take an aspect uh, an aspect ratio of one by one. I mean your your width is as big as your length, you know, of your height. Sorry, and you can just move around, see if a frame works for you, because that's a very classic in black and white to make this type of frame. You know, something like this, for example. Let's press enter. Could be interesting. You know, imagine you can frame it. You've got guiding lines. Could be interesting. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for this, and then I'm gonna do some post crop vignetting to add some vignetting because black and white deserve vignetting. And voila, you've got some fully dramatic, it's a bit too much maybe on this, uh, fully dramatic photo. Let's see if I can boost the highlights a little bit in that photo because I think the whites are not bright enough. Yeah, it's something like this. So originally we were here and we did this sort of a very dramatic uh, kind of photo. So I think it's fun to take a regular shot and try to make something artistic with it. And you can do a lot in Lightroom. You see, we did not open Photoshop at all. We did everything in Lightroom. So hope you like this. Before we finish, as usual, I wanna show you my website, which is called photosearch.com. If you go on the App Store here on, on the menu, you can get all my training. And if you like this type of training, I have a lot of, I advise you to, to buy the Lightroom for training package. We have got six hours of course, of just doing landscape or urban city retouching from A to Z, just like we did, you know, many, many examples. You will get very good use of Lightroom. I have incredible reviews on these courses. Uh, thank God, apparently they are good. So you can check them out. Also something which is totally new, I created a, a page called podcast where you've got all my podcast episode. So you can go back and see they're very easy to, to find. And also you can purchase for three euros all the raw files that has been used, meaning that you can recreate, you've got the 21 million pixel raw file and you can create every single photo that you see here at home. You can even print them, you can even post them in your room, just like I show you here in this photo, for example, in my office, you can do all that. All I'm asking you is not to sell it again or use it for commercial purpose, but for your own purpose, for your own decoration, you can do whatever you want with it, but you, you only get the raw file. You have to follow the tutorial to get the end result, but I think it could be fun. Last but not least, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please subscribe to my channel so you will get this weekly podcast for free. Okay, guys, thank you for listening and let's get back to the studio. All right, guys, so I hope you liked that tutorial. Um, this week, Inspiration is actually the Scott Kelby Worldwide Photo Walk. It's happening this Saturday, Saturday 13. In the morning, Scott Kelby will be in Montmartre. He's, unfortunately, his photo walk is completely full. There's actually a lot of people on waiting list. And this is a call to these people because there is a second walk in the afternoon at three o'clock organized by me. And anybody who's been on a waiting list for Scott Kelby can come to mind. And as Scott will be in Paris, there is chances you might get a hold of him because we, at five o'clock we're gonna take a coffee. The weather is not so incredible in Paris, but that's the challenge. We can do some great artistic photo together. So join me this Saturday at three o'clock. Here is a link to get all the details and see you next week for another episode.